Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that He's never going to test or try us except that there will always be ease along with and also after that trial. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that those who are patient will taste the fruits of their patience. And therefore, after the lowest downs, if you like, in the life of the Prophet and the most traumatic incidents, it was only natural that the Prophet would then be gifted by one of the all-time highs. Some scholars have said this is the greatest miracle that the Prophet has been given personally. And that is the incident of Al-Isra wal Mi'raj. Al-Isra means the night journey that the Prophet undertook from Mecca to Jerusalem. Mi'raj actually means the, if you like, item or the mechanism of rising up high. But we refer to it as the actual ascension, not the apparatus, but what the Prophet did, and that is to rise up to the heavens. And so Al-Isra from Mecca to Jerusalem, Al-Mi'raj from Jerusalem to the heavens. Subhanallah asra bi abdihi laylan. All praise be to Allah or may Allah be exalted because he has taken his abd in one night, laylan, min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa. From the Masjid al-Haram in Mecca to the Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem, alladhi barakna hawlahu. This Jerusalem Allah is saying we have blessed the land around it. Li nuriyahu min ayatina so that we may show him of our wondrous miracles. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ma kathab al fu'adu ma ra'a, that the, uh, the chest is not lying, the heart is not lying when it narrates what he saw. Afatumarunahu ala ma yara, are you gonna doubt what he saw? Walaqad ra'ahu nazlatan ukhra inda sidratil muntaha inda ha jannatul ma'wa. And indeed he saw him for a second time. He saw him at the sidratil muntaha. Id yaksha sidra ma yaksha, ma zaag al basaru wa ma taga. The eyes did not go beyond their mark. They didn't blink. They didn't become scared. He saw of the miraculous signs of his Lord. Notice. You see the parallel? Both surahs mention Isra wal Mi'raj with one reason, and that is to show our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the magnificent signs of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. The first question, when did it happen? Probably the strongest position around a year before the Hijrah. The second question, where did it happen from? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when I was in the Hatim, lying down, Jibreel came to me. So this is the most authentic version. There is another version the Prophet says that when I was in my house, I saw the roof open up and Jibreel come to me. Ibn Hajar says, this shows that he was in his house and Jibreel first took him to the Hatim. What is Al-Hatim? It is the semi-circular region that is outside of the Kaaba. And uh, he says that in the Hatim, Jibreel opened up my chest and he brought a bowl made out of gold that was full of, in one version it says Zamzam, in another version it says full of Iman. And he took out my heart and washed it and put it back. Then Jibreel brought me a Dabba. Dabba is a beast, it's an animal. Dun al baghli wa fawq al himar. It is smaller than a mule and larger than a donkey. Abiyal pure white and it was called al-buraq and al-buraq of course comes from the root of lightning right so it's lightning speed lightning speed and the process explained that it puts its hoof every hoof of this buraq it puts it as far as the eye can see according to another report in tirmidhi the prophet said it had a muzzle on it you know what you put on the the, the harness it had a harness on it and it had a saddle Jibreel was holding on to the harness and the Prophet ﷺ stepped onto Al-Buraq. He basically mounted Al-Buraq. What does an animal do that is mounted by a strange person? Jumps up, it neighs, right? So Buraq tried to do that. And Jibreel basically smacked him. Jibreel yanked the harness and he said, Woe to you! Alam tastahi? Are you not ashamed? For wallahi, no one has ridden you more blessed in the eyes of Allah than your current rider. And the Prophet ﷺ said that I rode him and he took me until we came to Baytul Maqdis. And I tied Al-Buraq to the animal post that is used by the Prophets. I went inside and I prayed two rak'at. According to one narration, the Prophet ﷺ prayed two rak'at. And when he turned around, فَالْتَفَتُّ فَرَأَيْتُ جَمِيعَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ 
he saw all of the Prophet's line behind him. From the other narration that we have, the Prophet actually says that I saw myself with the other Prophets. And there was Musa praying, Qa'imun Yusalli. And he was a tall and strong and muscular man of a brownish color, as if he is a man from the tribe of Shanu'a. And in fact, our Prophet said that when I was going to Isra'u al-Mi'raj, I passed by the grave of Musa. So this means he passed by his grave and then Allah took him to Masjid, to Masjid al-Aqsa, right? And then Allah took him to the sixth heaven. So he met Musa three times. And I saw Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam standing and praying. And the one who looks most like him is Urwa ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqafi. In another version, the Prophet said he was whitish in color. Of course, the Arabic is red. As I said before, the Arabs called white people red. And his hair glistened with water as if he had come out of a steam bath and he is a rather short man compared to Musa and then he said and I saw Ibrahim alayhi salam qa'imun yusalli notice Isa standing and praying Musa standing and praying Ibrahim is standing and praying right as he enters the masjid and the one who resembles him the most is your own companion meaning himself all of the prophets he's seeing are already standing and praying and this shows us the importance of salah that even after death at least for Ibrahim and Musa, as for Isa, he's still alive. The prophets are praying. And then it came the time to salah. salah so I was put the imam of them. So this version has it that he knew exactly what's going on. But the main point is he is leading the Anbiya and the Mursaleen behind him. He is the imam of all of the prophets. Not only this, but by extension, since every prophet is the leader of his ummah, and the Prophet is leading the prophets who lead all the individual ummahs, our Prophet Muhammad is the leader of every single ummah. I.e., as he himself said, Ana Sayyidu waladi Adam yawm al qiyamati wa la fakhr. He is the Sayyid. The Sayyid here means the leader, the master. He is the Sayyid of all of the children of Adam on the day of judgment. And then he said, I'm not saying this astaghfirullah to boast or be arrogant this is just a fact then he says that after he finished in this version jibril comes to him right now and presents two utensils in another version jibril does this when they ascend up to the heavens one of them has khamr and the other one has leaven right so there's wine and there is milk wine is still halal the muslims of mecca are drinking wine and jibril says choose and choose for your ummah so the prophet chose the milk and jibril says you have chosen the fitra asabtal you have chosen the right one and that is the fitra that is when the jibril came to him and the prophet sallallahu says jibril asked permission for the doors of the heavens to open and the gatekeeper behind the door asked who is it so jibril says it is jibril and the gatekeeper said do you have anybody and jibril said yes i have with me muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the gatekeeper says, has he been sent for? Jibreel says, yes. So then the doors open up. So for every single one of the seven heavens, the same story happens. They get to the second heaven and it's closed. Jibreel asks permission. The gatekeeper says, who is there? Jibreel says, it's Jibreel. He says, is anybody with you? The same conversation. Every single one of the seven heavens. The Prophet ﷺ goes to the first door. The first door opens and there is a man standing. The Prophet ﷺ described him as being tall, huge. And Jibreel says, this is your father Adam. So say salam to him. So the Prophet ﷺ said salam and Adam responded and said, Marhaban bilibn salih wan nabi salih. Welcome, O noble son and O noble prophet. Welcome, O righteous son and O righteous prophet. In the second heaven, there is Yahya and Isa ibn al-Khal, i.e. their two mothers were sisters, right? So Maryam and her sister and the Prophet ﷺ was told, this is Yahya and Isa, say salam to them. And so I said salam to them and they said, welcome, O noble brother and O noble prophet. Then the third heaven and in the third heaven was Yusuf salam. And the same thing, welcome, O noble brother and O noble prophet. And here is where the Prophet ﷺ said the famous phrase, I saw Yusuf and lo and behold, it was as if he had been given half of all beauty. Shatr al husn Then I went up to the fourth heaven. And in the fourth was Idris alayhi salam. And Idris also says, Welcome, O noble brother and O noble prophet. Then I go up to the fifth heaven and there is Harun. And the same, Welcome, O noble brother and noble prophet. I go up to the sixth heaven and there is Musa. Then I went up, Musa began to cry. So 
he was asked why are you crying so musa says i am crying because this young man who was sent after me shall have a larger following that will enter jannah than my own ummah and then he said that I went up to the seventh heaven, the same question back and forth with Jibreel. And then I saw Ibrahim alayhi salam and he was sitting with his back leaning on the Al-Baytul Ma'mur. What is Al-Baytul Ma'mur? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Wattur wa kitabin mastur fi raqtin manshur wal Bayt al Ma'mur. It's in the Quran, Surah Al Tur. Al Bayt al Ma'mur means the frequented house. The only information we have about Al Bayt al Ma'mur is that the Prophet said it is a house similar to the Kaaba. In one version, it is the Kaaba of the heavens, just like there's a Kaaba on earth. In another version, it is above the Kaaba on earth, such that if it were to fall, it would fall on the Kaaba on this earth. So it is above the Kaaba of this earth. And every single day since Allah has created the creation, 70,000 angels enter. Al Bayt al Ma'mur to basically do tawaf and pray, and those 70,000 never return, and every single day this happens. And Ibrahim is there because he is the one who built the Kaaba on earth, so he deserves to be associated with the Kaaba in the heavens. And Jibreel said to me, This is your father Ibrahim, Hada Abuka Ibrahim, say salam to him. And so the Prophet ﷺ said salam to him, and Ibrahim responded the exact same way that Adam had responded. Notice the beginning and the end, the same response, right? Welcome, O noble son and O noble prophet. So notice the dabba or buraq is still tied at the post, okay? So the journey is very simple. From Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa. From Masjid al-Aqsa up to the heavens, then he's going to come back down and then use buraq to get back to Mecca.